Hey bag ladies and bag dudes, today I'm going to be talking about leather labels, the summer sampler quilt along, the fabric line called Love to Pieces, acrylic templates, the book review will be for English paper piecing, I have a demonstration for another type of cork tassel, and I have a great giveaway at the end. I'm Sarah Lawson from Sew Sweetness, thanks so much for joining me for Social Sunday, my weekly sewing chat. Hey everyone, thanks so much for joining me on this lovely Sunday. I see Lauren there. Lauren, did you have your baby yet? Um, hi to Melissa. I saw someone from Milwaukee and it reminded me that I think last social Sunday, last Sunday, I was wearing um, tank tops and t-shirts and today um, I have uh, a longer sleeved shirt on. So today we had about 70 degrees here in Chicago. Last Sunday we had 98 degrees, so quite a big jump in temperature. I don't know what's going on with the weather, but I kind of like the cooler weather better anyway. So just as a friendly reminder, just about everything that I talk about during Social Sunday are things that I've purchased myself. So these are not things that I'm getting paid to talk to you about, but just cool things that I found that I'd like to share with you. And all the things that I'm scheduled to talk to you about, I link to in the description. So if you're interested in finding out more information about any of the fabrics, notions, or projects that I talk about during Social Sunday, just check that link in the description and you can find out more information there. So kicking off the chat, as always, my favorite portion is the notion of the week. And this week, it's not exactly a notion, but it's something cool that I wanted to, to share with you. So um, these are custom leather labels that I had made from a shop on Etsy. So you can have different colors, different sizes. Oh, sorry, we're having a little bit of technical yeah, issues. Um, all right, maybe I'll just hold up the labels instead until we get this uh, fixed. Um, but these are leather labels that I had custom made with the So Sweetness logo on the front of them. Um, there's different options that you can have, like I mentioned, different colors, different sizes. You can have holes punched on either side to attach to your projects using either rivets or thread. I had mine just as solid labels because I intended to sew around the outer edge. Um, but this was a great shop on Etsy that I custom ordered them from. They were really quick with communications, really easy to deal with, um, any questions that I had. Um, it was my first time ordering labels, so I had a hard time deciding about colors and thickness, but they were very helpful and I was really excited to get these labels. So, sorry, we're still having a bit of technical issues, but. When we get this back up, we'll show we'll show it in the, the side view so th that you can see them. Um, I had a question for you. Let me know in the comments, have you ever used any labels in your work? Oh, there we go, sorry. <laughs> Let me show these again, sorry about that. Um, I have a question for you. Let me know in the comments, do you use any labels in your work? So maybe cloth labels similar to clothing labels, maybe you stamp your logo in your work. Um, but these are what the leather labels look close up now that we can get the camera working. Um, they're a little bit thicker than the cork fabric that I use, but they're really sturdy leather labels and my logos embossed in them. And again, this is from a shop on Etsy. I had them custom made. The link is in the description if you're interested in finding out more. But do let me know in the comments if you have any labels that you use for your hand sewn items. So this week I was just working on um, some stuff on the computer. I have one thing to show you and then I made just one quilt block this week. So um, some of the viewers emailed to let me know that uh, my Sublime bag was on the cover of the most recent issue of Sew News Magazine. So I wrote an issue on cork fabric, just basic information about caring for cork, how to use it, what tools you'll need. So that was what the article was about. So the project is not in the, the magazine, but um, I was really excited that the bag did make the cover. and. Um, they also mailed me my original Sublime bag back, so glad to have this one back. This is probably one of the bags that I'm most proudest of making. I just really love um, the color combinations. Danny chose the combinations of the fabric. I had a really hard time choosing for, for some reason what fabrics to use for this project. Um, but anyway, this is the original Sublime bag um, back home again. And um, thanks so much to those that let me know that the magazine was on the cover really excited about that. So I've been following along on the Summer Sampler 2018 quilt along. So it's a weekly quilt along. The blocks are emailed out every Monday. And the first two blocks, I made them right away on Monday, but this third block, I sort of um, 
I got the block. I didn't have time on Monday to make it. And so um, the business of life sort of got the best of me. But this is what the block looks like. It's a foundation paper piece block. And I decided to go with purple fabrics for this week's block. So this is what my finished block looks like. I used the fusible applique papers for the back. And so I left my papers in. I'm actually going to leave my papers in until the quilt is finished and I wash the quilt because those papers dissolve. So I, I don't have to rip them out. I just left them in. And I actually used my um, seam roller instead of ironing when I added each piece to the block. If you've ever done any foundation paper piecing before, sometimes I get tired of getting up and going to the iron after sewing every little piece on there. So the seam roller made it a lot, a lot faster. And I was really happy with how this turned out. And now I have three blocks so far. So here's the other ones that I finished. Violet was helping me uh, with all of these blocks. She didn't help with the foundation paper piece, probably because I left it till the last minute. And then today she just wasn't in the mood, so I just did that one solo this week. But having a lot of fun with that summer sampler quilt along. If you're interested in joining in, um, links in the description. It's not a free quilt along, but I decided it was worth the money and I splurged and I think it's $24.99, something around there. And it was well worth it for the, I think, 18 blocks in the quilt along. So I'm having a lot of fun with that. Danny's favorite part of the chat. Um, let me know in the comments if you're a bag lady or a bag dude, so just go ahead and type that in. I know I'm certainly a proud bag lady and I sort of love the community that the term bag lady or bag dude has brought to the, I guess, online sewing community. It's been a lot of fun, so thanks so much for joining in with that and typing your bag lady or bag dude in the comments. All right, so the fabric in the stash this week is a brand new fabric line from a first time fabric designer. So you may be familiar with Mr. Domestic. He also has videos on his YouTube channel and um, his real name is Matthew Boudreaux. He designed this fabric line for Art Gallery Fabrics. So I was really excited to get these and wanted to show you uh, the fabrics up close. Oh, sorry. Um, so the fabric line is actually a lot of blues and greens, which is really interesting. And I love the teals in, in these fabrics. This is probably one of my favorite fabrics. It's a bunch of different flowers with the names of the flowers written sort of in cursive. Um, but let me pull some of the other fabrics in the line. Danny really liked this one a lot. This is kind of uh, not a border print, but the fabrics are going vertically up and down the fabric. Um, lots of really great colors and designs in this line. Here's another of the bigger scale prints from the line. And then a great stripe. Another of the flower prints right here. This one's sort of like an eye popping pink. It's really bright in person. This one's really pretty. Um, if I was gonna make a, a bag or accessory from this fabric line, I think I would probably go with, let's see. I, even though I really love this print, I think I would choose for a pouch this either this print or this print with maybe a stripe for the lining I think that would look really cool maybe these two together um, although I do like this one a lot so my, I might have to pull another blue one for it to go with that these two are really pretty as well um, again the fabric line is called love to pieces and it's designed by Matthew Boudreaux who is Mr. Domestic um, if you follow him on social media and if you're interested in maybe fat quarters or yardage from this fabric line, just check the link in the description and then you can find um, a link to Hawthorne Threads who carries the, the whole entire line. Okay, so one of the viewers a couple months ago sent me an email. Her husband, Ed, makes um, acrylic templates. So Robin sent me a package a couple months ago with a template they had made for one of my Cork Club projects, the Cork Zipper Pouch. And um, we've been talking for a couple months and I'm actually investigating acrylic templates. So I'm gonna show you a, a close up view of the templates that Robin sent me. I got these in the mail the other day. So this is for one of the minikins, the desktop cubes. We decided to investigate acrylic templates first for the minikins because they're smaller projects, um, small size pattern pieces and not a lot of pattern pieces. And so Robin sent me a couple samples of dif different thicknesses of the acrylic and different um, etchings different styles of etchings on the front. So we're, I guess, in the final stages of deciding about the templates. So I'm really excited 
to possibly have templates for the minikins. We may consider having templates for other bag patterns as well um, with relatively smaller pattern pieces. Um, so I'm curious, uh, let me know in the comments, would you be interested in acrylic templates? So um, I don't have pricing to announce for these yet, but we'll be selling them for all the minikins and depending on the, the pattern, maybe less than $10 for each set of templates. So if, especially if you're making these in large amounts, either if you're selling them or making them for a lot of gifts, the acrylic templates might be helpful because with an acrylic template, you can easily use your rotary cutter and cutting mat to quickly cut out the pattern pieces that you need. And because the templates are clear, you can still fussy cut because you can see the fabric design um, obviously on the other side of the clear template. So let me know in the comments if that would be something that you're interested in. We did have requests for templates probably for the past year and we've just been slacking on getting that taken care of. But um, like I said, I've been talking to Robin and Ed about the templates and hopefully have something to announce to you soon. And we'll announce that on the live shows as well as social media. Okay, so the book review for this week is for a book called English Paper Piecing. Um, you know me off and on, I'm working on my English Paper Piecing project. So I'm gonna step over to the other camera and show you the inside of the book. Again, it's called English Paper Piecing. The author is Florence Knapp. And I thought this book was unusual for the fact that a large portion of the book is dedicated to talking about the history of English paper piecing. I guess I should start flipping through so I can show you. Um, a large portion of the book is dedicated to talking about the history of English paper piecing, um, people in the sewing world and on social media that are prolific with um, handwork and English paper piecing. So as you can see, like a lot of text and, and writing in the book. Um, there's some talk about why handwork is sort of a relaxing hobby to have and also symmetry and there's talk about fussy cut and different design elements. Um, as you can see, this is the same uh, pattern, but depending on the types of fabric used and darks and lights, like the design looks different depending on your fabric choices. Let me hold that up so the glare is not so apparent. So as you can see, those are the same blocks, but the look of the quilts are different. Okay, so there's also discussion, like I said, about um, different people that are making English paper pieced quilts. Here's the modern English paper piecer. So these are sort of just spotlights on what others are making. And there's also information on the basics. So let me flip to that section. Okay, techniques, so supplies that you'll need, how to get started. I particularly enjoyed the section on sewing with curves because that's not something that I've done, done yet. I haven't gotten to that portion just yet, but I'll point it out when I do get to it. Templates and cutting fabric, um, plastic templates for fussy cutting, and basting with glue, which I'm a huge fan of. That's what I do with my personal English paper pieced project. So this is how to attach the different shapes. And like I mentioned, the curves. So this is how to sew with curves, which I'll have to study this pretty carefully since I haven't done that yet. I really love this quilt over here and the fussy cutting, as you can see, particularly stands out in the center. And let me show you the different, there's a couple different block instructions in the book as well as a full-sized quilt. And let me show you what those designs are. Okay, so as you can see, we've neared the end of the book and we haven't gotten to the instruction yet. So like I mentioned, majority of the book is talking about the history, different techniques, and highlighting different makers. So these are the rosettes. This is what the the block looks like. Information on how to, to assemble the block. And then here's a second block as well as the instruction. And then the full size quilt. So this is what the quilt project in the book looks like. I really love that center rosette. And I like also that these small squares are pieced for the background. So it's sort of partial, partial handwork and partial machine piecing, which kind of appeals to me. So all that instruction, here's the rosette 
instruction in the book and that's the last project so as you could see there's there's three rosette instructions as well as the quilt and then there's another picture of the finished quilt which I think is pretty gorgeous again the book is English paper piecing by Florence Knapp and like I said I thought it was interesting see hearing about the different history about English paper piecing sort of a um, not a lecture but a lot of background information about English paper piecing which I thought was fantastic Okay, so the demo for this week is for making a different style of cork tassel. So earlier this week, I showed a video on how to make this no-sew cork tassel with a swivel clip and either a rivet, a Chicago screw, or a pearl snap. So this comes together really easily. I have a different method to show you today in case um, you're looking for something different to try. So for this method, you'll need one three and a half inch square of cork fabric. So I'll show you on the side view how we're going to proceed and make that tassel. So here's my three and a half inch square of the cork fabric. Let me show you first what the finished tassel looks like. So here's that finished um, second form of tassel that I made. Here's the original one that I posted this week. So as you can see, they look a bit different and use a bit different type of hardware. So this hardware I purchased from Emmeline Bags and this had a tassel cap attached to a swivel clip. So this all came in the same package. Here's that package from Emmeline Bags. And in addition to this piece of hardware, it also came with a screw in the package. So let me show you how to assemble that tassel. So I flipped to the wrong side of the fabric and I drew a line with my fabric marker that was three quarters of an inch down. So I'm just gonna take my ruler and draw that line. And we're gonna use that three and a quarter of an inch line to cut out the tassels. So I have one that I cut out before the show. As you can see, here's my three and a quarter of an inch line. I took this over to my cutting mat and I used my rotary cutter and I cut every eighth of an inch. So I just used my ruler. Let me bring that ruler back over. Every eighth of an inch, I used my ro rotary cutter to cut and then I moved it over and I made sure to make sure the ruler was sort of centered on top of the cork. I didn't, I found it was more difficult to have the ruler down below because then the top portion of the cork kind of slipped around while I cut. So I made sure to keep that ruler even and then I cut every eighth of an inch using the ruler rotary cutter. It was pretty fast and easy. So the next step is to pull out some fabric glue. So I use Beacon 3-in-1. Beacon Fabric Tack is also a good type. Um, I like this glue because it's not as runny as some other glues that I've tried in the past. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put a line of glue kind of right down the middle. Okay, let me pull out that, that hardware. So I'm gonna open up the package. And the, the hardware came in different finishes. This is the rose gold finish. And you can certainly, before you put the glue, roll your um, piece of cork up first to make sure that it fits inside. If you're using a really thick fabric, you might need to trim some off the ends, but this three and a half inch square fits just fine for, for cork fabric. So I'm just gonna roll this up. Okay, so this is what it looks like rolled up. And of course, um, you can check it before you go any further to make sure that it fits inside. Okay, so there's two holes. One hole is bigger than the other. The bigger hole of the two is where the screw is gonna go inside. So I'm gonna take that screw out of the packaging. And I'm actually gonna use an awl to make a hole through the hardware. So an awl is just um, basically a pointy stick. It's very sharp on this end and um, I use it sometimes for garment sewing when working with a pattern, but I'm just gonna stick that right through the hole. Kind of move it around a little just to make sure I get a hole going. Okay, so the screw is going to be screwed into that hole I just made with the awl. So I'm gonna pull out my screwdriver. So this is a Phillips head screwdriver. And I'm just gonna screw that in place. Okay, so you wanna keep screwing until just a little bit of the screw is sort of poking out, sorry, I hold it in a different angle so you can see a little bit better. 
So you wanna just leave a little bit of the screw out just like this. You, you don't wanna have it all the way underneath the top edge of the hardware. But as you can see, it's really easy to install and you can make your tassel out of anything that, pe that can be cut raw. So either cork, leather, wool fabric. And like I mentioned, um, I cut my square three and a half inches by three and a half inches. If your fabric is really thick after you cut your tassels and place it inside the hardware, you can decide if you need to trim it down if it doesn't fit well inside the hardware. But this is what the cork tassel looks like. If you're interested in that other tassel that I showed, uh, the video is, the link is in the description and this one's on my YouTube channel as well. And this is just two different options for making tassels, which then you can attach to your bag or when you change bags, you can move them or even use it as a keychain. So hope you enjoyed that extra demo on having a cork tassel and adding it to your bag. So I'd like to invite you, if you enjoy our videos, if you're watching on Facebook, to go ahead and hit the share button right now. Regardless if you're watching on either Facebook or YouTube, if you would help us out and hit the like button, which looks like a little thumbs up. Either way, that helps us out so much because the more likes and shares we get on Facebook and YouTube, the more Facebook and YouTube share our videos with others who may be interested in them. So thank you so much for doing that. It really helps us out a lot and we appreciate it so much. So let me know in the comments if you have any questions for me, either sewing related questions, bag making related questions, or if you have a question about a sewing tool, let me know in the comments right now and I'll be answering a few questions live in just a second. Um, before I get to the questions, I just wanted to remind you that the Minikins challenge for June, if you have the Minikins patterns and videos, is for the Zeppelin pouch. So I decided to choose the Zeppelin pouch for June because Father's Day is coming up and I thought it would be great to make in a gender neutral fabric and give as a gift for Father's Day as a dop kit. So I thought that would be fun. And also this is just one of my favorite Minikins because it comes together really fast. All you have to cut out is fabric for the main panel, which is basically the front and the back of the bag and the handle. And everything comes together three-dimensionally due to the magic of sewing, which is really exciting. So this is one of my favorite projects to make. It's, it's really fun and also, as with all the Minikins videos, there's a video available for it as well to follow along with the PDF pattern. Okay, so Danny's gonna post some questions on the screen, any questions um, that I can answer live. I'll answer a few questions and then we'll get on over to the giveaway for this week. All right, any good questions, Danny, that you saw? Uh, I see one coming up. Um, Jennifer says, uh, where do you normal ha normally hang the tassel on the bag? Let me see if I can reach without pulling out my, make my mic out. So I showed, ah, okay, so I showed this bag. Uh, this is the satellite bag the other day and I, I hooked the tassel on the side. So if there's any hardware on the bag, you can hook it on there. Um, perhaps if your bag has either metal rectangles maybe or D-rings like in this bag, you can hook it on there. Um, you could certainly make a smaller tassel to hang on to a zipper if you wanted to as well. Um, oh, I had a question in the Facebook group too in case you're wondering. This fabric on this bag is designed by Tula Pink and it's from her Tabby Road fabric line. Great question. Um, Stephanie wants to know, can you talk more about that sticky paper you use for the paper piecing? Absolutely. So. Um, let me show you. All I have handy is the <laughs> paper that's on my block. Maybe I'll show you. Danny, can you cut to the side view so I can show maybe a little bit closer up um, what the paper looks like? Um, and let me pull the packet of paper out too. Um, can you zoom out? Yeah, could you zoom out? Yeah, that's really tight. Okay, so this is what the front of the packet looks like. I just pulled it out of the plastic packaging so it didn't look shiny. Um, but links in the description for the applique paper. It's 20 sheets and I actually print on my sheets. So um, you wanna print on the non-shiny side. So one side of the side of the paper is sort of matte looking. One side is shiny when you hold it up to the light. So you wanna print on the side that is not shiny, which is what I've done here. I just put this through my regular printer and as, as you can see, it, print, it prints out a full page of templates. I cut mine down obviously for the block. Um, but when this paper is finished, I stitched mine using normal foundation paper piecing suggestions for a shorter stitch length. So I used a one and a half millimeter stitch length. So if I wanted to, I could go ahead and uh, rip this paper off by uh, perforating it and just tearing it. So that it would rip as well. But 
as I have been mentioning lately, I'm a rather lazy sewer, so if you didn't want to rip the paper out, even though it rips out quite easily, you could either, um, because it's water soluble, when you finish the block, you could either spray it with water and this paper would dissolve, or what I'm planning to do is I'm planning on finishing the whole quilt, quilting it, binding it, and then when I wash the completely finished quilt, all this paper will dissolve. And so um, it just dissolves inside the quilt. It the little fibers stay in there, but it doesn't feel like paper. Like I said, it just dissolves. And I've actually used this for, I think, two or three other quilts that I've completely finished. And the quilts turned out lovely. I didn't feel paper or notice anything different about them. They just felt like regular batting. And so this paper is really handy. And I like the fact that you don't have to do anything. Because the part that I never liked about the foundation paper piecing was pulling all that paper out. It took a lot of time. It was difficult sometimes, especially where the seams are. This paper over here was trickier for me to get out. And I was also afraid of pulling my threads too hard while I was trying to tear the paper out. So love that applique paper. And like I said, um, I used it with the seam roller and um, links to both of those are in the description if you're interested in either of those. Okay, Kelly says, are you planning on doing a video tutorial on your backpack? I'm going to buy the pattern, but feel more comfortable sewing to a video. So I'm not sure which backpack you were planning on making. We do already have a video for the Cumberland backpack in case that was the one that you were thinking about. Um, we don't have a video yet for the Edelweiss backpack in case that was the one that you were thinking about. Um, we don't have a video planned for that one this year, but if the Cumberland backpack was your choice, then we do have a video available for that one right now. Kathy says, would it be possible to use iron-on clear vinyl in inside the Minikins challenge bag? Yeah, you sure could use, um, in case you saw my social Sunday chat last week, I did a demo for using clear vinyl. You sure could attach the clear vinyl to your lining fabric before you start assembling the bag. And that would be a great way for you, especially if you're using it as a dop kit or for cosmetics, to wipe it down if it gets dirty on the inside or if you get shampoo or something on the inside. Yeah, you sure could use that iron-on vinyl. And I recommended the, the Pellon Vinyl Fuse. Uh, it worked great and it looked nice also after I turned the, the pouch that I made right side out in that demo that I did last week. Anita says, I'd like triangle templates for different size bag bottom boxing. Oh, that's interesting. I hadn't thought about that. Let me add that to the list, okay? Christina says, when you're done making a bag, does it always look like it doesn't have any wrinkles or do you have to iron it when it's finished? I always, 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 always iron a bag when it's finished. I don't think I ever make a bag where it doesn't need any ironing when it's done. And I do see sometimes photos maybe of bags where they might not have been ironed and the ironing makes a huge, huge difference. I actually had a email asking um, about how I iron bags. So I'm gonna add that to my list for next Sunday um, just because it's, um, it's a simple thing to skip, but it makes a huge difference. Lauren says, I've been using my wool mat this week a lot and every time I do, I think it smells funny. Is that normal or will the smell go away after a while? I don't know, with my wool mat- Did you I, have her baby? Oh yeah, Danny wants to know if you had your baby. I'm guessing no, but maybe you did. Um, my wool mat, I haven't noticed any funny smell, but I do occasionally use um, my flatter spray, which looks like this, which has a scent. So I'm not sure if the scent from the flatter spray is just covering up any smelliness from the wool or if it just doesn't have any smell to begin with. But I haven't noticed anything out of the ordinary with my wool mat, sorry. <laughs> Diana says, Sarah, how do you keep yourself motivated while working at home? I'm finding it distracting not to leave and go to the shop each day. So some days are easier than others. Uh, depending on what I'm working on, sometimes I get distracted or it's hard to, to stay focused. And I, I wish I had a better answer for that. I th my only thing was that I've been, and you may know this if you've been watching the show, I've been recently taking up horseback riding and so my friend Vanessa, who might be watching, I'm going to see her at her stable tomorrow to do some work with one of the horses. And then every Tuesday I go to the stable where I ride at and where Violet rides at for a riding lesson. So I find that just having something separate than sewing helps me a lot stay focused more because sewing was my hobby, but now it's what I do for a living. And so it's a huge gray area for me and having that extra hobby has really helped me, I think. Um, keep sewing a bit fresh because some days it's it just feels like same old same old and 
having something else to do uh, really changes it up for me a bit. So, Sonia says, I bought the Chicago screws and I used it on the tassel. Can we use them anywhere you would use a rivet? For sure. Uh, maybe you missed, I'm not sure if you saw my demonstration a few weeks back on the Chicago screws, but they're a great replacement for rivets because with a rivet, I have a tabletop rivet press, which is, mine was kind of pricey. There are handheld rivet presses as well, but Chicago screws, all you need for a Chicago screw is a Phillips head screwdriver and they're really easy to install and they look just like a rivet. And I would use them anywhere that you would normally use a rivet or if you like the look of rivets, if you would just like to try it out a little bit and see how you like it, definitely try the Chicago screws first to see how you, you like using them and they're very easy to install. So no difficulty there, um, either that or a rivet press, either one is completely fine. Uh, Sonia says, where's your other half? He's actually right there. Um, I can see him out of the corner of my eye. He handles on the Sunday shows, he handles all the um, the technology. So on, our, on my Sunday show, since I'm showing so many different things and there's a lot of camera angles, he's not on the show with me on Sunday, but on Tuesday he is because I'm mostly just answering questions and uh, we're just putting questions on the screen on Tuesday. So that's, he's right there. <laughs> Jennifer says, what press and cloth do you use? Um, I have to admit that I use, uh, sometimes I just tear off a piece of muslin. Um, I, in this case, it's a case of, uh, what does it do as I say, not as I do, because I usually don't use a pressing cloth. I've, when I first started making bags, I would gunk up my iron and, and it would be, I mean, like the whole iron would be covered in like brown adhesive, but um, I guess over the years I've gotten better and um, keeping my iron pretty clean. So I admit I don't use a pressing cloth, but I, I usually do recommend if you do use one yourself. Tamara says, what is the difference between English and foundation paper piecing? That's a great question. Let me pull out, uh, Danny, give me a second. I'm gonna pull out my English paper piecing right here. Okay, so English paper piecing, this is the one that I'm working on and it's gonna be a long-term project since it's uh, a big quilt. So English paper piecing is done by hand. So you attach um, fabric pieces to, some people use cardstock. I use that fusible applique paper. So you, you first you sew all of these shape, shapes individually. I attach all of these to the cardstock and then I start assembling the pieces one by one. So the English paper piecing is done by hand. Foundation paper piecing is done by machine. And this one, the block that I showed you, this was foundation paper piecing. So this is attached to, you're sewing through paper with your sewing machine. The English paper piecing, it's handwork, but you're still using the paper, which is why they're both called paper piecing. But the difference is one is English, that's by hand, and foundation is by machine. Uh, Pamela says, do you think the iron on vinyl would work with wool? Um, I'm actually not sure. I've not tried it with wool before. I've used it on quilting cotton and on canvas fabrics before, so I'm not sure. Diane says, do you use metal zippers on the Sew News cover? Yeah, so the Sublime bag here, just the front zippers were metal zippers and this top zipper was a nylon zipper. Um, I, I don't know, I like the look of the metal zippers but I like how easy the nylon zippers are to sew with because you can just go over them with your needle. So um, I don't know, it's a tough call for me. I guess, I guess I'm usually one to choose the easy way out to be honest. <laughs> All right, any other, maybe, uh, how there's about, a ton of questions. oh, Danny says there's a ton of questions. Um, maybe, I don't know. Yeah, just pick a few more and then we'll get to the giveaway. Um, Linda says, where can I buy the Chicago screws? Um, if you go to emmelinebags.com, she's got a huge selection of hardware, including Chicago screws in a few different finishes. I bought the, the rainbow iridescent uh, Chicago screws from Emmeline Bags, um, and those were great. I liked using those. Dawn says, how would you press a bag made with vinyl? That's a great question. Uh, let me give you a quick, let me grab some wonder clips and I'll give you a quick demo. So this is what I exactly did with this bag. Uh, maybe Danny could take the question away from the screen yep. so you could see a little bit better. All right, so since you shouldn't press vinyl or cork fabric on the right side of the fabric. Microphone. Oh, sorry. Um, let me say that again because Danny said I was blocking my microphone. So. With a bag that's made with either cork or vinyl, you shouldn't be pressing on the right side of the fabric because you could damage it. So since you can't press it, this is what I actually did with this exact bag. So what I did was I took my Wonder Clips. I have these, um, these are the regular sized Wonder Clips. And I put the clips on all the seams. Oops, um, this is a pretty thick seam. 
I put the wonder clips on all the seams. Um, so you would do this around the, the whole bag. Um, you can do it on the top edge as well. Leave the wonder clips on either one to two hours or overnight if you want to as well. When you take the wonder clips off, there will be tiny marks, but the marks go away after a few minutes or maybe 15 minutes or so. And because the wonder clips are holding those seams in place for at least one to two hours, it kind of finger presses the seam for you. So that, that the wonder clips is what I would use for pressing areas of a bag that have vinyl or leather on them. And if you're not sure, you could always test the wonder clips on a small area first, or if you want to put a little bit of fabric on top and bottom of the wonder clips, but I just put the wonder clips straight on the, the, the ba actual bag. Kyla says, what is the difference between an iron and a steam press? That's a great question. So an iron is just your regular iron. A steam press, which I actually don't have one, is um, kind of looks like, I guess, alligator, like a, has a hinge on it like this. Um, they're usually quite big. And you can actually steam, or not steam, but attach large pieces of fabric to interfacing. So for example, if you wanted to, instead of cutting out your pieces individually of fabric and interfacing, you could just take maybe, say, like a half yard of your fabric with um, maybe shape flex interfacing and put it through the steam press and steam huge areas of fabric at once and then cut out your fabric after you've attached the fabric to the interfacing. So like I said, I don't have a seam press. We just don't have a big enough area here in the sewing room. Um, I actually haven't set up my embroidery machine yet because I don't know where to put it. I mean, like we have a small working area in here, but um, a lot of people are very happy with their steam presses. Um, Gloria Mar says, I wish Facebook had a chat option. That way we could all communicate instantly as a group and help each other all the time instead of Sunday and Tuesdays here. That's a great... Um, closed group in Facebook. Yeah. Um, we, we don't have another option for that on the Facebook page, but if you would like to join us on the Facebook group, um, basically it's one huge chat and people post photos as well. And if you'd like to join the Facebook group, if you're not already a member, just check that link in the description and there's a link right there for the Facebook group and I hope you'll join us. It's a great group. Lots of friendly and helpful people in there and lots of great bags being made every day and posting photos of in the group. And you can ask questions as well. Even if you don't have photos to post, you can certainly ask a question anytime. All right. Uh, is that it on the questions? Yes? Okay. Danny's nodding yes for that's it on the questions. All right. So last week's giveaway winner was Deb Buckingham. So I've already contacted Deb on social media. I've heard back from Deb, so congratulations to Deb. This week's prize is, uh, let me pull it out from the stack of fabric over here. This week's prize is, accessibility shortcut, items voice off. Oh my gosh. Okay, sorry, I hit something on my computer. Um, four books. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, this, week's, the, this week's giveaway is four books and some fat quarters from Tula Pink. Ruby Star Rising is one of the books. Danny's laughing at me. I don't know what happened. Um, Sundressing by Melissa Mora. Um, so Many Dresses, So Little Time. That's the third book in the giveaway. And the fourth book in the giveaway is called Simply Sewn. And so all of these books have the templates or pull out pages to make all the projects in the books. And the fabrics included are Tula Pink um, Eden fabrics. So these are fat quarters from the Eden fabric line. And I tried to pick sort of coordinating colors, so mostly blues and purples. And this is my actual favorite fabric from the line. So this will be included. Let me make sure it's not upside down. These tigers, which I made a few projects with this tiger fabric. And every time I take the projects out in public, people think that it's um, like a tapestry fabric, but it's not. But just the artwork looks incredibly tapestry-like. So um, the four books and the fat quarters of fabric will be given away to one randomly drawn winner at the end of the day on June 9th. All you have to do to enter the giveaway is answer this question in the comments. Just go ahead and type it out. Let me know, um, do you have a specific tool set for bag making? Let me know in the comments. It can be yes or no. Um, so I, that screwdriver set that I, the Phillips screwdriver that I used in that tassel demo, I have this little screwdriver kit with different sized heads. Um, I pretty much just use the same Phillips screwdriver head all the time, but this is my little set. Um, I think you can find it at a hardware store for around $10, so I keep it in my sewing room because I like to know where it is because sometimes Danny, Danny's not super organized with the tools, so um, I always like to have, I need that screwdriver handy at all times, so I 
have taken it away from him and kept it in my sewing room locked away so he can't get to it so it's mine now so um, thanks so much for entering the giveaway um, I'll see you again next Sunday for social Sunday at 7 p.m. Central Time and have a ha great week and happy sewing Thank you.